Hello, my friends. I know there's a lot of people who like the same things as me. I've been running into a lot of that since I started this channel. People seem to like the primitives and the country and that sort of thing. And I thought, well, I'm going to share this one magazine in particular because it is so, so charming. A Primitive Place and Country Journal. This is summer 2016, but I don't care. <laughs> I love it and I hold on to it like a book. Because it's like a Bible for decorating in primitive. It has five primitive colonial country home tours, the history of early oil paintings and bringing the natural beauty of wood into our homes. I love wood. If I could, I would have all wood walls, but part of the reason for that is because I'm from the West. Let's see. This is a summertime issue, but I'm not sure there's anything about it that would really indicate that necessarily. But as we look at this uh, old farm table and chairs, now see I noticed that these, this room in particular, really has very little color. It's warm and it's brown and gray. And I love that look, but I would definitely miss my chickens and all the bright colors that I keep in my house. Nevertheless, I'm always attracted to this look. See that? Um, I wonder if they ever did make lamps like that quite. Uh, I'm not sure. But they definitely have created a, a look here. We'll get to that later, I guess. This is just an advertisement for KP Creek Gifts. Oh, sweet, sweet bed. Birds. I used to sell these birds at my country store. All different kinds. My favorite were the cardinals because Cardinals weren't really out in the West much, and now that I live in the South, boy, Cardinals are a dime a dozen. <laughs> There's so many. This is an advertisement for paint and for dolls. Okay. If a picture paints a thousand words, the history of early oil paintings. Well, that I'm not all that interested, but I was noticing this bucket bench. It's called a bucket bench. But what they used it for was, um, in the old days, when there was no plumbing, anyone who went outside was, um, beholden to go down to the creek or wherever the water supply or the well and you would bring that water in in a bucket and the buckets would line up along the bottom of the bench. People just stored it right on the inside of the front door or the back door, whichever one, but it's called a bucket bench. I have one of those in my house. Well, let's see here. Here's somebody's made a, a stool out of a barrel, looks like. Or maybe that uh, was a tree stump, maybe. I don't know. I know I'm supposed to be interested in art, but only so much. I used to sell it in my gift shop, but... I never really had that kind in my house. Well, 
Look at those lovely books. Oh my goodness. This is the history of the writing desk. In the age of personal computers and home office offices, desks have become permanent fixtures in just about every American home. However, desks have been an integral for furnishing in homes for centuries. Most of us spend considerable time working at a desk, yet we probably never spend any time pondering the history of the familiar item. So let's just take a look. Take a time to look back at the history of the furnishings. One of the most famous desks from colonial America is actually nothing more than a portable rectangular box with a locking drawer and a lift-up lid. Bible boxes had been used not only to store the family Bible, but also to store writing materials. The lid also provided a solid surface upon which one could write. And based on these designs, portable desks became the fashion of the day. They varied considerably in size and design. The larger models were intended to be placed on a tabletop and provided a sloped surface upon which one could comfortably write. Yeah. Even the colonialists had laptops. <laughs> There's that old artwork again. Is that not a moody picture? So moody. Look at these books. Gosh. Pine Cone Gift Shop. It's places like these that I used to visit that I got me so, so interested in starting my gift shop so many years ago. Selling primitive colonial wares. Where is this? Let's see. Uh, North Canton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. I have been to so many gift shops back east, south, west, all over this country. I went to so many gift shops to learn and to feel and get an understanding. I didn't do it for that reason. I just did. And then that's when I fell in love with the whole idea. And of course, I was collecting myself a little bit, but look at the yellow wear. The yellow wear is so pretty. I've got a little bit of that, too. Um, um, mostly the, the old bowls. This person, they took a and painted uh, a textured yellow wall to kind of give it a, an antique look. I painted my walls slightly, well, it's pretty, I can't explain mine, it's more than a, a butter, a color of butter, to make it look antique, and yet not dirty or anything. Let's see, be happy, y'all. Celebrate spring. I believe this magazine is summer 2016. Yeah, I guess they're kind of getting a jump on it for next year. Okay, this is Water in the American Home. There's another bucket bench of a different style. Same idea. Though we now take the procurement of water for granted, it was an essential survival chore for our ancestors. This daily duty progressed in America from early times until about 1935 when a pressurized water supply leading to a cast iron sink and faucet became available to homeowners. 
Early pioneers used wood or metal buckets to transport water from its natural source to the kitchen back porch, and these vessels, vessels of water were stored on an open bucket or pot bench until they were needed. Thus the name of a bucket bench. <laughs> so I guess I was right. Wow. Neat. Built-in cabinet. Dry sink with zinc, sink, a zinc, sink. Water in the parlor and bedroom. Well, we're very familiar with that. I'm sure all of us have seen the pictures in a bowl. A wet sink hooked up to a well. And then finally we had running water in the home. Restoration with plenty of room for pies. Most of you know this is called a pie safe. Keep a, a pie cooling off and yet keep flies and germs off of it. And wandering hands. <laughs> yeah. So primitive looking. Is that not beautiful? I think that's what's on the cover. Yes. These chairs. That would be very uncomfortable, actually. I don't think I would enjoy sitting in those chairs. Sort of like it was when I worked at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> those chairs around those tables are so awful. But I don't think they were really built for comfort. I miss some of the stuff I used to have. Neat. We got a stone fireplace with a wood-burning stove inside of it. This looks like a corner unit. Yeah. See the amazing how there's a modern stove in there, but it, it kind of gets lost, you know, you don't really notice it much. Of course, it helps that it's black. There's more yellowware. It's called yellowware. Well, it's not really, um, yellowware is not really difficult to find because it was made a lot. But it's still a nice collector's item. It's early Amer- way early Amer- So here we have let's see her kitchen, which was part of the eighteen hundreds addition to the house, was small. It's not big, but it's big enough. Well, that's what we're talking about decorating a house that big, I can't even imagine. Ooh, but what fun. <laughs> that fun that would be. So, oh, look at that fireplace. That is so cool. I'd love to have a fireplace like that. Look at that old chair. Look at that. It's got like little patches in it. It's pretty worn out. Probably in its original condition, you know. Table's so neat. Now the only thing that's kind of, I know ooh, this was like primitive artwork, but it doesn't seem to go in that room to me for some reason. And I wouldn't put, like I think this is an old, uh, either a post office I'm not sure, but I don't think it goes over a fireplace. That's just my opinion. My humble opinion. I'm not actually really even sure I like this room. There's some neat pieces in it, but it's... See, who am I? I don't know. I don't really have the right to, 
to say, but it's just not my taste, I would say. So, let's see what else we got here. This yeah, bunk beds. Looks like that bottom bunk comes out, I think. Because it's kind of sticking out. I'll bet you, I'll bet you it rolls out. That'd be neat. Just put your bed in at night. <laughs> now, see, I, I don't really, I don't know, I don't really like this house the way it's decorated. I don't think they're making good use of the the mood of the brick and everything. I don't know. Yeah, it's not my favorite kind of room either. I mean, I just hear this is so rustic. I would. I would maybe add wood or, um, I don't know. I just, it's not my favorite. But if you like it, don't tell me. Because <laughs> we don't want to pick on each other. Okay, this is the title of this article. Is There's No Place Like Home. A Hadley, Pennsylvania homeowner returns to the hometown of her youth and with the help of her husband, transforms a circa 1885 home. Hadley was my hometown until I was 13 years old, says Roberta Slater, who now calls the town located in the western part of Pennsylvania home again. She's moved back and bought an old home. Look at that. Shaker. Crackers, I think it says. Look at that, that is so neat. Now see, this person has taken primitive and made sure to add some color into that. So, there's got some red, reds going on here. Ooh, ooh, red chair, red chair. Oh, well here it is again, it's when Roberta was 13, her mother died in a car accident on her way to work. Roberta's father had died eight years earlier when her mother passed away. She and her older sister and two younger brothers left Hadley to live with aunts and uncles. My sibling and I went to live with aunts and uncles, leaving our friends and our Mayberry childhood behind. Mayberry. <laughs> That's how I felt when I moved to my neighborhood. No. My neighborhood growing up was a fantasy. Even though they provided wonderful homes for us, my heart was always in this small town of Hadley, which held so many precious memories for me. Roberta remembers. Oh, sweet. Beautiful red chair. I love that. This is Tavern. Now see, I love the way this woman decorates. So, uh, this here, this unit right here, I don't think that it's, I think, I don't, what do you call it, it's faux. Somebody painted it and made it look old. I think it's hard to say for sure, but same way, I think, with these cupboards right here in the corner. I think those, although they've done a very good job to make it look. I'd sooner have that than, you know, a really modern looking cupboard. Roll top desk up at the antiques are genuine though. I would have no doubt about that. Well, there's one way of incorporating um, colors to put in flowers as if they were, you know, fresh from your field or wherever. Let's see here. Let's look at this next page. Yeah. Mm, beautiful. Look at the glow of those lights there. So pretty. And oh, wouldn't that be neat? I love that. This is a folding door for the bottom of the stairs. This person really, 
really has a similar taste to me, except I can't. Oh, I can't. I can't decorate my house that way. My house is... It's, it's uh, 1920s, so it's got all that oak. And I'm not sure what my house... Oh, I know. I, I looked it up once and found the um, 1920s typical furniture and decorations. And I went, oh, no way. I don't want that spindly furniture. I want something sturdy. Warm and primitive. Yeah, I've got a mishmash of things because no matter how much you you know, everybody has their difficulties, and I can't afford to to run out and make my house look like this. You know, most of us can't. Now here's another bucket bench that I was telling you about. Um. Only oh, yeah, this person has converted it to, or maybe in the old days they did it anyway, but it would be very chancy to, to put, a, to hang your coats or hats above buckets of water, but I'm pretty sure that's what that is, it's a bucket bench. Very nice looking. I'm using my bucket bench for books and ASMR stuff, I just leave it. <laughs> more utilitarian. I really use it. Isn't that just beautiful? Look at that brick. A brick wall inside of the house. So quaint. Absolutely love that. Can you see it? That is just gorgeous. I love it. Look at this. They've got more red flowers. Forget oh, willow or something is that is those blue kind of dishes. So I'm not bothering to read all these articles. So I never do. I just get snippets and stuff. But oh wow, look at that kitchen. Is that not gorgeous? Oh man, I love their brick walls. I would love to have real brick walls inside of my house. Now my husband is now in the process of installing, building, a brick hearth for our old wood-burning stove that we're putting in the house. And we are not doing it for looks, we are doing it simply because our old house is so cold. Oh my gosh, you can feel a breeze coming through the floor. Because we have no subfloor. I don't know why they didn't do a subfloor in the old days. 1920s and our by our walls were pretty bad too back then. And they've all been insulated and stuff. So. But not the floor. Oh my gosh. But our floors are so neat and they're so original that we don't want to disturb them. So the best thing to do is just... You know, add more heat to your house. Instead of trying to spend bucks and bucks and bucks trying to, you know, um, I want to keep my old floors. I don't want to compromise the quality of them just to get efficiency. So basically that's why we're putting in a stove. Now, see, these are neat. These are, um, I think those are antique reproductions. I think so. Mm, I don't know what that is. Yeah, those might... No, I don't think these are. I think these are genuine. I like those. I, mean, I really like that, too. But it's... I, can, I think I can tell it's an antique reproduction. If it's not, then somebody has painted it and, and tried to make it look... This might be a bucket bench also of sorts. That's possible. And this is... I think that's genuine. That looks genuine to me. Bringing the natural... 
natural beauty of wood into our homes. An enduring love of antiques. A Hanover, Pennsylvania couple has refurbished their pre-Civil War home and filled it with antiques that they have admired and collected since they were children. Wow, that's a long time. Gosh. But look at that. Oh, wow. That is so pretty. The thing is, it's so warm. It's yellow, gold. It's golden. It's just gorgeous. And But they've added a splash of color. You can see here with the... Um, the blue wall and the rosy curtains. That's gorgeous. That's a nice way to incorporate color. If you're going to have an otherwise wooden or mostly brown... Oh, look at this table. Look at that table. Those stools are so neat. Dresser in there. Well, it'd be sort of like um, a buffet. They use it like a buffet table, which is not uncommon for those days to keep uh, linens and good silverware and that kind of thing in the drawers. Company comes. Yeah, it's a lot more formal looking same time. This is, looks like a, maybe a den or something. Look at all those colors. It almost looks like a rainbow room in old style. That's me. Oh, this must be a cabin then because look at those walls. It's Looks like you got more cement than you do wood. <laughs> I don't know, probably shrank over the years. And I know one time I went to buy a, a log cabin with my husband and what the realtor finally told me, although, you know, that it was a different realtor, wasn't the one trying to sell the home, but I was warned that you don't want to buy a cabin unless you've done certain things to the walls to somehow flies are able to get in there and lay their eggs and they can actually hatch and you end up with a bunch of flies in your house. That's what I'm told. Yeah, so we didn't end up buying it. It was too expensive anyway, but we had been warned, you know, Heads up, anybody who wants to buy a, an old cabin. There's things you need to do to make it really habitable. Not seeing anything here that I'm crazy about. Don't like the color combination much. It just looks... Of course, I mean, everybody to each his own. I mean, I'd feel lucky to have any of those things, but... It's not my taste quite, nor this. I think I'd do something very different with it than they have done. I wouldn't take a fireplace and paint it orange. No way. In and of itself is beautiful, but it's, I don't know, there's something, something off there for me. That is a gorgeous bed, though. That is a gorgeous bed. Look how tall. All the bedposts are. You can't even see them on the other end of the room. <laughs> so far up. Wow. That is so cool. I'd love to have a cabin. Oh, wouldn't I love to have a cabin? The beauty of the sunflower. I agree. Sunflowers are so beautiful. 
my bathroom. My sitting bathroom has a ton of them in there. I'm going to do a bathroom tour one of these days. Because it's kind of a large room. This is gorgeous. Is this also on the cover? No. No, that was, oh, that was in the front. I think I, yeah, it's here. Now it's here. Enlarged. Teamwork and know-how help this couple preserve history. Yeah, I think I'm gonna like this one because it's more historically true, I think. And they have a good ideas for color schemes and stuff. Yeah, see this? Oh, I could probably do that. All I'd have to do is uh, paint. I have oak cupboards. All I'd have to do is paint. See, it's an, it's an old-fashioned design. But they did not have... In primitive days, they didn't have... Um, the golden oak. Like I've got... I wonder what that is. You think it's an, um, maybe it's an, um, an oar for a boat. Strange place to keep one if that's what it is. If anybody knows and they hear me saying this, tell me what that is. I know what that is. That's a, you know, you stoke the fire, blow some air on it. There's a name for it, too, and I can't think of it either. Uh, here's somebody uh, who decorated the house said, As luck would have it... Oh, no, this is the author speaking. As luck would have it, Wanda married her high school sweetheart, Lowell, who is a contractor. He built our house 35 years ago. All I have to, all I have to do is show him a photo in a magazine or a book and he can make it. Well, he's done an excellent job. Look at that. That's pretty. Oh, look at that. I'm just gonna keep saying, look at that, look at that, look at that. <laughs> because I want you to look at that. <laughs> I used to have, um, a shelf like this my sister made for me. It's very pretty. I also had another one that I bought from a country shop. And I have lost track of it because... Well, honestly folks, I have been divorced. And a lot of the things that I loved stayed at the house with my ex-husband. That's okay. That's life. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. That's in Job, in the Bible. Let's see what else we got here. They, so you can see that the ceiling in here is a modern low ceiling. If it were me, I would probably paint the ceiling as well to be in keeping with the spirit of and the feeling of antiquity here. So they got the walls the right color, but they should do the ceiling as well, in my opinion. I have a set of curtains like this that a friend gave me, and I haven't hung them anywhere. I don't know if I'm going to use them. Neat bed. If I had this bed, I'd put a, a big lacy canopy over it and make it all girly. <laughs> I think that's what it's for. 
or I think you're supposed to put something over it for perhaps in the old days it was a protection from light or maybe it was a protection from mosquitoes, flies, whatever. Long time ago, I'm sure. Now look at this room. The article's called The Joining of Two Hands Makes One Heart. The story of Cabin Creek, 1812. A metropolis, Illinois couple had taken their mutual admirations of antiques and their unique individual talents and created a home and business that is full of the early antiques and make-dos that they love. Okay, look at that corner. So quaint. I see, I love baskets. I have a lot of baskets, but they don't look old and worn like these. That is neat. They really have some authenticity about what they've done here. I think that cupboard's genuinely old, too. I think they got it all right. I think they got it right. I don't see a thing in there that is not a genuine antique. Let me see. Maybe the light fixture. I suppose if a person tried hard enough, they could get everything genuinely old. But boy, they are close. Look at that. They even have... Um, a bowl that they're using for a sink. <laughs> Can you imagine using a bowl for a sink? Is that, that's a real faucet. They are getting super authentic. And this stove here, it's a reproduction, but it's identical to the old ones. It says Country Charm on the front. That just, that just make you feel like you're stepping back in time. Wow. Oh, look at that fireplace. That is so neat. This is the couple right here who did all that. Kudos to them. They've got furs hanging, hanging by the fireplace. Antlers. Now, see, that was realistic because men in those days, they, they certainly did hunting. Wow. Another sink with a... That's a real sink that they... And they're just using a, a bowl for a sink. I'm sure the plumbing goes down in here and all, but... Sure fool me. It would sure fool me. And look what, oh, this is just amazing what they've done with the laundry room. Can you see that? They have taken a washing machine and dryer and put wood all around it in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. I would have a laundry room like in the day when things were like this and used like this, this would still be a wealthy man's accommodations. Bottom line. Look here, this looks they got a gun over the mantle that looks like a really genuine old gun. They have done it all. They have done it all. They even have dried herbs hanging on the um, ceiling, hanging from the ceiling. Stairs. I guess there's really no way to make stairs look old, but it's wood. That's 
all that matters. Here we have, um, looks like their family room or living room. Very much like a hunter's cabin. You know, they, although they do have a spinning wheel here, that's a good idea. You just stick some leather over a chair to make it. I mean, that seems like something somebody actually would do back then. Put a fur over your, over your chair to make it last. Yeah, I like that idea. Might have to try it. I suppose if you're going to hunt for food, you could keep the the heads for trophies, but if you look at this part of the body, it seems like a waste of meat if they were really using it, you know, to, to eat. I mean, recreating authenticity of the old days, I just don't know that they would have saved that much of the animal for looks. At least not the Native Americans, I know. <laughs> They'd be eating every last bit of it, and using the antlers for tools, no doubt. That is a beautiful room. That is just gorgeous. This man who owns this house must be a hunter, you would guess. Now see their bed a rope bed and I'm sure that that's authentic rope that they have under well maybe not because that mattress looks like a, you can kind of see under here that the mattress is pretty straight and firm but they might have you know gone ahead and put a regular mattress on top of ropes but that's I think that's an antique reproduction but I could not tell you for sure This does not look like genuine cabin walls, but I could be wrong. It's just that they're so straight, and I don't remember cabins ever having such straight sawn wood, you know. I don't know. I'm so judgmental about these things, and I don't because, you know, if anybody gave it to me and it was mine, I'd just be going, nee, 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 nee. <laughs> Maybe. No. Nah. No, actually, I wouldn't. How oh, beautiful, though. Any one of us would be so lucky to have something like this. These old baskets. I can't tell if that's a real fireplace or not. So, but it's a good, it's a good scene. It's pretty. Abraham Lincoln. Now that's an authentic type of thing to hang on a wall, especially for the primitive days. This is the outside. Yes, this is the outside of their home. And. Of course, authentically, the wood is graying, gray, and it does look like this cabin was done with really straight logs. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. I was wrong. I've never seen a log cabin where the wood is so straight. Cabin Creek, they call it. So symmetrically straight. The patio is really, really neat. Very gray. Everything's very gray. 
in contrast to just the page before, which is very gold. Everything's gold and polished. And then you go gray. <laughs> because it's outside. It's pretty still. It's very pretty. That looks like a sunroom or something. Patio that's been closed in. This is the outside of the home, if you can see that. So it's like a mixture of... It's a combination of... Um, oh man, I can't think of the name of that type of house. It's a cabin, but it's also a... Oh, I can't think of this cottage of some sort. screened in porch. Now that I wish I had. We get so many mosquitoes out here in the south. They've put up a, a pretend post office in their in their fence <laughs> and where you, you have to go through to get out. <laughs> I would do that. I would love to do that. That is so cool. And here we have an out out. Gosh, they have just gone to great lengths to recreate the whole thing. Trapper's cabin in the backyard holds many precious items. It contains an old wood stove that belonged to Trevor's father, the old traps that once belonged to Heather's grandfather, and an old bed that Trevor made for Heather as a gift. Yeah, but I want to see the inside, and you're not letting us see the inside. This is neat. I want to read this to you. Trevor and Heather Shreves are living their dream life in their newly created 1812 cabin. It is a life that they each know would not be possible without the other. Although we love hunting for antiques and primitives, our greatest find has been each other, they say. Their mutual love of antiques and their appreciation for each other's unique talents have helped to make their business and their marriage a success, and they are very thankful to get to share their passion with their family, friends, and customers. Happiness is priceless, says Heather, and it is easy to see why the Shreves are so happy with the life that they have created. Everything about this couple, just like their decorating style, flows together, and it has been created by their hands, as their wedding cake stated, the joining of two hands makes one heart. That's beautiful. All things grow better with love. I like the way this uh, magazine incorporates human emotion with the whole art of decorating. And this one says, Pam Green has extended her love of primitives to the old weathered barn located on her property in Sandy Hook, Kentucky. Her home was featured in our spring 2015 issue, A True Primitive Addict. Oh, look at that home. Gosh, that's huge. Garden's pretty. Wow, look at patio. Oh, I'd love to have that screen. Newburyport, Massachusetts. They have got some homes back there. I'm telling you what. So much history back, e back east, yes. This one, this article's jobs. The jobs of colonial times. Yeah, I'm not reading it. Let's talk about food. <laughs> Strawberry cake, two cups of all-purpose flour. Okay, well, today I had a Dairy Queen blizzard. Oh, that was good. Oh, that looks really good, though. Chocolate-dipped fruit cones. Pepper steak. Cucumber radish. 
Spanish sal salad. And then Brook Farm. I guess we're in the advertisements here. go to the stores that they represent or to buy from them. Traveling, yes, I would love to go traveling. I used to travel all the time. Try, no, fly your primitive flag. Ooh. Was that not a beautiful magazine? I'm holding on to this for a long time. It's gonna be my decorating Bible if I ever get to do primitive. Well, hey, thank you for sharing this with me. Taking the time to watch this video. Love you guys.